The story began in Sioux City's 4th Academy. The principal, Su Jinlong, announced to the students that they would all become players of the inner world that day. The system decided their class the moment they entered the formation below them. Whether they became strong warriors, unshakable knights, agile assassins, or powerful mages, it was decided by their fate, and Su Jinlong believed that all of them would turn into powerful individuals of their respective classes, so he did not say more. Soon after, the transfer formation activated. Among the students was Kaio Yu, and he was relieved that the time had finally come after waiting for 18 years since his reincarnation. The world he was in was the Kaiji Star, a parallel world so similar to Earth. However, unlike Earth, this artificially developed inner world suddenly appeared, and mankind was overturned from then on. Various difficult dungeons appeared all around the world. Upon reaching the age of 18, all humans got abilities through the transfer formation and they used them to clear said dungeons. By killing the monsters, they could level up and gain attribute points to increase their powers. As Kaio Yu was transferred, a system prompt welcomed him. This was his first time entering the inner world, so he was asked if he would like to start the draw for his class. Kaio Yu confirmed and begged all the gods for a good class. Soon, the draw was complete. A ghastly skull materialized and enveloped him with its deathly aura as the system congratulated him for getting a hidden class. Kaio Yu gasped in amazement as the system revealed his class, the Necromancer. He was overjoyed as he exclaimed how awesome it was. The Necromancer was a very rare class, there were only a few in the entire world who could get it. With this class, he could summon countless high-level undead creatures from the gates of hell with just a single wave of his hand. As long as he had enough mana, he could be a one-man army. Usually getting a hidden class meant he would turn out to be stronger than others, so he immediately checked his attribute page. His rank was an apprentice, and every attribute was good except for his spirit, which was zero. Kaio Yu was shocked to see this, wondering how could a necromancer have no spirit attribute. The initial attribute points were randomly distributed just like his class, and the highest he could go was 10 and spirit was a mage's most important attribute, so he wondered how he could even fight. Nonetheless, the system coldly ignored his cry and questioned if he wanted to draw his talent. Without a choice, Kaio Yu gloomily confirmed and remarked how he would be doomed anyway even if he got an S-grade talent. Soon after, the draw ended. Kaio Yu stood there in shock as the system congratulated him for getting the talent, the brave heart of a mage. Its grade was unknown but it allowed him to gain 10 attribute points. Moreover, it had a passive effect which enabled him to gain free attribute points upon killing an enemy with a physical attack. As if it was not enough, it also showcased an active effect, giving him the ability to increase other attributes to the same magnitude as the specific attribute value. However, it was only limited to one attribute before using the active effect. Kaio Yu wondered if what he had read was wrong because getting free attribute points was almost impossible as one could only get them while leveling up. With the passive skill of the brave heart of a mage, he could get free attribute points as long as he killed his enemy with a physical attack and even if the active effect could only be used once, it could also increase his other attributes to the highest level. If Kaio Yu used it now, he could become an all-rounder with 10 points in all attributes and a newbie with 10 points in all attributes would make him a monster worthy of being recorded in history. However, if he waited until his strength reached 1000, 10,000, or even 100,000 before using it, Kaio Yu believed he would become a necromancer and a real all-rounder warrior. He smirked as he remembered that strength was the most important attribute for him to use physical attacks effectively. Without hesitation, he commanded the system to put all 10 attribute points into his strength. The system did as told, and now his strength had increased to 20. Kaio Yu decided that his next step was to register and finish the beginner's task as he could only get into a class after completing it. The next second, the space swirled and he was teleported. He was teleported in front of an elf, and beside her was a teleportation portal. She greeted him and introduced herself as Elaine, the one who would guide him. Her beauty mesmerized Kaio Yu, and he silently wondered whether she was really an NPC. Nonetheless, he informed her of his intention to register and receive the beginner's task. Elaine replied she would be happy to help him as she handed him the beginner's gift. Kaio Yu received the beginner's equipment, the old robe and the beginner's staff. He also received the F-grade skill book, Skeleton Summon. 
equipping the items. Kaio Yu realized that the robe was pretty much an accessory while the summoning skill was useless with his zero spirit points. However, the staff was heaven sent, and with his 20 points of strength, he thought it would be useful to hit stuff. Kaio Yu turned back to Elaine and asked for his task. Elaine smiled and revealed that his task was to escape the Misty Cave. She explained that for this particular task, he had to be careful as he could not kill any of the skeleton soldiers and must only find the quickest way out. She was about to warn him if he did otherwise, but Kaio Yu suddenly vanished in front of her, and she wondered where he had gone. Meanwhile, Kaio Yu was already inside the Misty Cave. Before him was a gloomy pile of skulls. He suddenly asked if Elaine said something at the end. However, he dismissed his worries, and he believed the beginner's task would not be difficult. But he mused on why the place was filled with skulls. Suddenly, a skeleton charged at him with a dagger as its weapon. Fortunately, Kaio Yu noticed the movement and turned around as he asked who was there. It was a level 1 normal monster, the skeleton soldier. Kaio Yu immediately gripped his staff. As the skeleton soldier neared him, Kaio Yu also prepared his attack. With a downward swing, he hit the skeleton soldier's face, reducing its health points by 20. After that, its skull fell to the ground and its body turned to smoke. It died easily, but Kaio Yu complained how difficult it was to fight without magic. Suddenly, the system announced that he received one attribute point and three experience points for defeating the skeleton soldier with a physical attack. He also received an agrade passive skill, the Might's Miracle for killing his first monster and it made Kaio Yu feel lucky. The Might's Miracle could convert each point of Kaio Yu's strength into two points of attack power. He muttered that strength determined the damage output and defense was for the reduction of damage. Kaio Yu checked his attribute page and saw that his strength was now doubled. One point of strength was one point of attack power, and it was the same for all other attributes, so that meant if his enemy had zero defense, he could deal 42 damage in one hit. The skill's value was being able to use one point of strength as two points, and Kaio Yu exclaimed how incredible it was. Suddenly, another monster emerged. It was a skeleton soldier again. Kaio Yu thought he should focus on finishing his task first. Soon, more and more skeleton soldiers appeared, attacking him all at once. However, Kaio Yu remained unfazed. With one swing of his staff, four monsters died. He received 4 attribute points and 12 experience points. As a result, he leveled up, and more attribute points were awarded to him. Kaio Yu added the points from killing the monster, so he now had 30 points in strength. And for a normal monster, it would be extraordinary if they had up to 10 points in one attribute. However, he paused for a moment and speculated if the monsters were there for them to farm points as it would be too easy. At that moment, a new monster appeared. As expected, after the soldiers failed, the skeleton captain appeared, and although it was a normal monster, it was twice as strong. Kaio Yu believed that with its 15 points of strength, it would be a problem if he got hit by its attack. However, the skeleton captain only had one agility point, so Kaio Yu decided to attack first. Unfortunately, his strike was blocked. The skeleton captain countered, and Kaio Yu immediately dodged. He cursed under his breath as he realized the bastard was attacking while defending easily smashing floors. As the battle continued, Kaio Yu saw a gap. He quickly swung his staff, dealing a heavy blow. Grabbing the chance, Kaio Yu jumped high into the air for a downward bonk. With a scream, he dared the monster to block his attack. However, the monster was helpless against him as it shattered into pieces. As Kaio Yu expressed how strong the skeleton captain was, the system rewarded him 3 attribute points and 10 experience points. He wondered how the others would complete the beginner's task if it was this hard. As he picked up the monster core, he was curious about what random reward he would get once he opened it. He received the Skeleton Fist Set, a degrade disposable item, and after using it, the next hit had a 100% chance of causing critical damage. Kaio Yu commented on how good it would be if it was not disposable. Suddenly, another batch of skeleton soldiers emerged from the ground. Kaio Yu immediately noticed their arrival. This time, even more skeleton soldiers had appeared. Even if he was level 2 now, his health points were barely 20 points, so he decided to be careful not to get hit by accident. Kaio Yu swiftly destroyed the monster, giving him plenty of attribute points and experience. Following this, he leveled up and gained another 10 attribute points. It was good that the monsters only had one agility so he eliminated them with ease. Kaio Yu checked his attribute panel and felt satisfied with his progress. Meanwhile, outside the school, the students were proudly sharing their respective classes with each other. As more of them gathered, they realized almost everyone was out. They questioned why the principal had not announced anything yet. They were surprised at the thought that someone was still inside the inner world. 
However, they laughed it off. The task was simple to complete, and even if the skeleton soldiers inside were strong, they ran so slowly, and they would not get caught, so if someone still failed and died inside, they would become a joke. Amidst all this, one student contemplated why Kaio Yu was not out yet, and he wondered if something bad had happened. At the same time in the misty cave, numerous piles of skulls surrounded Kaio Yu, and he asked aloud if the skeleton soldiers were all dead now, but he was surprised that there was no notification for task completion. Out of nowhere, a harrowing voice rebuked Kaio Yu. He was instantly alerted. The skulls around him started to float. After that, they moved in one direction. The skulls were starting to fuse. A dark aura suddenly seeped from the ground. As the fusion was completed, a new type of monster materialized. It was a normal boss, the level 10 skeleton king with bone piercing and bone explosion skills. It had to be noted that this boss was injured. Kaio grimly questioned why a boss was there in the beginner's task and if they wanted to kill all the beginners. While he was lost in thought, the skeleton king raised its scythe. Kaio Yu quickly jumped and evaded the attack. He was nearly hit and felt lucky. Otherwise, he would be dead by now. The Skeleton King was strong but not nimble, which was the only advantage Kaio Yu had. Its defense was as high as 60, and he knew he would not be able to break through it. He charged forward. His staff hit the Skeleton King's lower body. The attack worked, even if it was only 32 points of damage. He believed that as long as he successfully attacked it 10 more times, it would be alright. Without hesitation, he brandished his staff all over the Skeleton King. It was helpless as its health points continued to decrease at an astonishing speed. The Skeleton King tried to counterattack, but Kaio Yu was quick on his feet to dodge the attack. As he stepped back, he wondered if the Skeleton King was only there to scare the beginners. He saw that it still had 200 health points remaining, but it would be over soon. Suddenly, Kaio Yu's eyes widened. The Skeleton King spoke and revealed he had been guarding the cave for so many years, and it was the first time a player had killed his way through it, so he would not be so weak right now if fewer of his soldiers were killed. Now that a beginner like Kaio Yu somehow fought through the defense of someone as great as him, the Skeleton King decided not to let Kaio Yu continue his life. At that moment, Kaio Yu was pushed back and discovered the Skeleton King's sudden increase in strength. It appeared before Kaio Yu in a heartbeat. The Skeleton King had now become faster. Its huge scythe struck the ground, sending shockwaves all over the place. Fortunately, Kaio Yu was quick to dodge its attack. He was now unable to directly hit it, so he decided to restrict its movement first. The Skeleton King chased Kaio Yu relentlessly. On the other hand, he saw that the boulder behind the Skeleton King was nearly collapsing. As it attacked Kaio Yu, he took the opportunity to run to its side. The Skeleton King turned toward him and abruptly halted. Kaio Yu taunted the Skeleton King to come at him. The monster obliged and delivered another powerful attack. This time, Kaio Yu tried to block it. As a result, he was blown away, and his health points were reduced by 26. It had only brushed against him, and his health points were now only 4. The Skeleton King did not give him a chance to recover. It took the opportunity to deliver another attack. Kaio Yu could only grit his teeth at the sight of the approaching blade. In the end, the Skeleton King hit the boulder above it, causing it to collapse. The boulders rained down, and the Skeleton King was defenseless against it. Its health points were reduced by 70 while Kaio Yu evaded the area. At this moment, the Skeleton King's health points were only 129. Kaio Yu could not hold on for much longer, so he decided to end its life quickly before it could stand up again. He jumped in the air, resolving to kill the Skeleton King in one hit. The Skeleton Fist set materialized in his hand. With a determined gaze, he punched the Skeleton King. Its face froze in shock. The next second, Kaio Yu tore it in half, delivering a critical strike. As the dust settled, the Skeleton King's remains also dissipated into nothingness. In front of Kaio Yu, a teleportation portal appeared. The beginner's task, Escape the Misty Cave, had been completed, and he now officially became an inner world player. He was also rewarded with 30 free attribute points for killing the Skeleton King for the first time. The system detected that he killed the Skeleton King through a physical attack, so he received 10 free points and 50 experience points. Furthermore, he received 3 levels for his first kill, raising his level to level 5. As though it was not enough, he also obtained a boss equipment, the Ring of the Skeleton King, for completing the beginner's world first kill. The ring was C-grade, and upon wearing it, Kaio Yu's first normal attack's damage was increased by 50% but it had a cooldown of 24 hours. It was not bad, and although it was not as strong as the fist set, Kaio Yu thought that its advantage was the reusability. 
If he sold a C-grade item, it would be worth a few hundred thousand, so he had struck gold this time. He then wondered about the first skill, realizing no one had killed the Skeleton King before him, so he wondered how they passed the trial. In the end, he decided to forget about it and left the Misty Cave. As he returned to the school grounds, the student earlier instantly noticed him. He was Yang Zyindi, and with a smile, he immediately hugged Kaio Yu, who asked him what he was doing. Yang Zyindi replied about his assumption of Kaio Yu dying inside because he took too long to complete the task. He asked what happened, and Kaio Yu was shocked that others had already completed the mission. Yang Zyindi explained that it had been three hours since the last person came out. Kaio Yu asked what Yang Zyindi's class was. Yang Zyindi replied that he became a mage, demonstrating the abracadabra spell full of manliness prompting Kaio Yu to question if they had gone to the same place. Unexpectedly, someone interrupted their conversation. He laughed at Kaio Yu for being last. He was the class representative, Ma Fei, and he snorted in disdain for Kaio Yu as he only had his looks. Being handsome was useless, and in the world, talent was everything. In the end, he asked Kaio Yu if he even knew what his class was. Kaio Yu was annoyed. He wondered why Ma Fei liked to pick a fight with him. Suddenly, Zhu Jinlong called for everyone's attention. And now that they were all registered, he informed them that tomorrow, the class would participate in beginner's training. He encouraged everyone to introduce themselves, their class and talent, and to get to know each other. One by one, the students introduced themselves, and while some were proud, others were also gloomy for feeling doomed because of having low rank classes or talents. Amidst all the commotion, a girl named Zhao Ziyu introduced herself as a healer. She instantly captured everyone's attention. Next was a girl with a shield. Her name was Zuoyu, she was a paladin, and her talent was B rank. It was Ma Fei's turn, he was a swordsman with a B rank talent. The students were amazed. With one sword and one pot, Ma Fei got what he deserved. A swordsman was an extremely strong class in the inner world, so they believed the class representative was indeed blessed by the gods. Zhu Jinlong was also surprised because someone with a B rank talent was already considered a prodigy, and he thought the current batch of students was good. Now then, it was Kaio Yu's turn. He was overwhelmed with power as he introduced his class as a necromancer. As for his talent, he decided not to reveal it out of convenience, but in reality, he had no idea what it really was. Zhu Jinlong was overjoyed. He noted that a necromancer was a hidden class. Hearing this, the students were in disbelief as they remembered a legend about a necromancer wiping out an entire union all by himself. Meanwhile, Ma Fei felt concerned but he thought that even if it was a hidden class, mages were famously fragile, afraid of getting someone close to them and killing them. He believed that necromancers were even weaker than the average person of many years near the dead and it took so long to cast a summoning spell so they basically had no teammates to defend them. In the end, assassins, swordsmen, and other attack-focused classes were their best friends. Ma Fei snorted when he thought about Kaio Yu's decision to hide his talent, believing it was because it was low-ranked and he was embarrassed to say it. On the other hand, the students were amazed at how humble Kaio Yu was despite having a hidden class which they could not compare and they assumed it was the difference between them and a genius who had such a down-to-earth personality. However, Kaio Yu was concerned. He was a necromancer who could not even cast one spell, and was only stronger than an average person so he did not even know if he could protect himself in the training. As a result, he did not make a big fuss otherwise he would not know what to do if his classmates realized he could not even summon a single monster. At the same time, Zhu Jinlong felt proud of Kaio Yu's achievement. Once he completed the beginner's training, Su Jinlong concluded that Kaio Yu would definitely be able to enter the nation's best university. After everyone's introduction, Su Jinlong ended the class for the day and told everyone to go home and prepare for tomorrow's training. As they left the school, Yang Zhaingdi praised Kaio Yu for being cool, and he asked why he could not get to be a necromancer instead. He had at least eight points of spirit and his attributes were not so bad so Yang Zhaingdi asked if his talent was not bad. Kaio Yu, the man with zero spirit points, awkwardly comforted Yang Zhaingdi that it did not matter and that he could work hard to make up for it while in his mind. He considered Yang Zhaingdi's single-digit attributes, which in comparison made him a deity who had 76 points. Later that day, Kaio Yu announced his arrival at his home. This was the house his parents left behind and after they disappeared, he would always announce his return because, in his memories, his parents would do the same. 
Kyle, you remembered his parents were good and kind people. When he was six, they said they were going on a trip to the capital. After that, they mysteriously vanished and he became an orphan. It had been 12 years since then, so Kyle, you wondered just where were they. At that moment, he decided to enter the university in the capital and find out the truth. The next day, the students gathered again and Zhu Jinlong announced his only wish for training today. He reminded them that if they thought they could not do it, they could back down immediately. He reasoned that even if they failed the training, it was better than dying. Zhu Jinlong urged them not to be nervous and usually, it was not so dangerous and no players would die but there was always an exception. He recalled a previous traumatic event where a single beginner world caused a class of 40 to be completely wiped out, vanishing into thin air. Until now, they did not know what kind of terrifying world it was but all they knew was that it was called the Nightmare Village. The revelation stunned everyone in shock. Zhu Jinlong seemed to be happy with their expressions as he urged them not to be so solemn either since as long as they left the inner world in time, they would not be in danger. He then ordered them to get ready as he reminded them to enter once the stopwatch on his table reached zero. In an instant, the students prepared themselves. Soon, the stopwatch reached zero. The training had begun. They were teleported to another realm. The students immediately scanned their new surroundings. Some of them were worried about the eeriness of the place they had to beat and Ma Fei took the chance to assure them that he would be their protector. At that moment, someone emerged out of the darkness. 